one of my biggest pet peeves would be oral hygiene. There was this guy and he tried to make a move basically. And the moment he came here, I was like, okay, bye. <laughs> to another episode of Men Explain. Thanks for joining us. Today, I got a handsome man in our midst. Okay, all our, all our men that join us are handsome, just for the record. But we have extra handsome one here today. It's Aiden. <laughs> welcome. Thanks for the warm welcome. I'm very happy to be here at Men Explain. Finally, finally. I think we've been talking about this off air. For a long yeah, time. Off the record. Aiden confronted me and he was like, how come I'm not on an episode <laughs> of Men Explain yet? And on the record, yeah. I've watched, I've listened to all the different episodes. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I think we couldn't have found a more perfect guest for today's topic because <laughs> we're talking about dressing up. Do men dress up enough? And then we're also going to touch on personal grooming and I'll share a couple of horror stories, you know, just a casual weekday. <laughs> so <laughs> before we begin, maybe you can share a little bit about yourself with uh, our audience. So my name is Aiden and I'm an actor. I was a host. Uh, and at the same time, I'm very interested in fashion mm. in fragrances yes and in grooming and you're also not um shy or embarrassed to admit like hey you know i do skincare i of course in our line also makeup is kind of a normal thing for us you do that too right well i, I think it's very important for more guys to kind of like step up yeah and own this part of you know wanting to look good mm. for yourself for the people around you mm. and for more people to be advocates yeah. of you know personal grooming oh. and I never thought I'd hear up. that advocates of personal <laughs> grooming it sounds like it should come naturally you know there's always a stigma about guys who want to look good yes right yes so beyond your buying uh, an expensive watch like a Rolex or like a PP yeah. beyond your buying a, like a very nice car mm. there are other ways of you know presenting yourself that are actually a lot cheaper yeah right? <laughs> than uh, a sports car <laughs> yeah, and go a much longer way yes yes I, I do agree um, but unfortunately the thing is when a guy comes across too conscious of like oh my skincare routine or like my hair needs to be perfect you know and a little bit vain as so to speak people kind of stereotype them or like box them up like oh you must be fabulous yeah. or you're so vain or you must be in this industry they put them into these boxes right yeah I mean I feel like I get a free pass because I'm in the technically media. an artist yes, or, like, yeah. or an actor so yeah. it's it makes perfect sense for me to understand how to do makeup yeah. you know out of the like 10 mil artists that I know probably 8 and a half of them know how to apply at least basic makeup for sure because sure, right? yeah. that's part of our job Yes. Um, but outside of this industry then people I was actually talking to a friend recently yeah. he was asking me for makeup tips oh and like a normal person like a no, like, in yeah, a regular out, industry. Out of the industry. Okay. And then, uh, and then I was sharing with him, okay, but you can use concealer in this way. And then I stopped in my tracks and, and I asked him, uh, you know, if you apply makeup, would people think that you are too feminine or oh, you're too vain? Yeah. Like as a guy, I'm asking yeah. him yeah. whether or not that is a consideration that he should have. Yeah. So I feel like the, even for me, I also have certain you know, notions about what people would perceive as okay. whether it's a feminine behavior or whether it's yeah. behavior that is not considered masculine. Right. But does that matter to you? It doesn't matter to me mm. because like, it's something that I do and I hope that more people can... Normalize there are, it. There are a few basic steps that every guy can take to make themselves look much better. Yes. Right? Yes. Say if you have like acne prone skin, you just put some concealer. Yeah. It'll look a lot better than going out with a face full of like red marks. Yeah, right? yeah. It's just about being more presentable. Yeah. yeah. But I was also thinking, well, your colleagues, because he works in the corporate setting, right? Mm. I was like, well, your colleagues think that you are too. Conscious why are you wearing thing. makeup? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Why is a guy wearing makeup? Yeah, yeah. So actually, this is a question for you. Yes, yes. <laughs> I don't know whether you have friends around you. I was like, you doing this, you're mm. very used to guys dressing mm. up, for sure. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I, I feel less pretty when I'm around you guys. <laughs> <laughs> if any of them are like OLs or like yeah. they work in a corporate setting, if they see a guy in the office yeah. with makeup on, yeah. what would they think? So, you know, that's an interesting question because for, for, for me, like I helped my boyfriend put some concealer before. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm outing. Okay, you know, what this, is his reaction? <laughs> this entire, seriously, this entire series, I've outed him like so many times. He's going to... Yeah, it's an they should rename it. I know, right? So, um, no, but he asked me for help because he was going to film something like for corporate.
corporate uh, video or something like that. And they didn't have time to, he didn't have time to go down and actually get proper hand makeup. And it's not really necessary, right? To him, mm -hmm. he's like, oh, my girlfriend has everything. I was like, okay, aside from the fact that I'm several shades lighter than you, <laughs> I don't have the right concealer tone for you, but let me see what I can do. So I, I did help him out. And he said, hey, you know what? I actually look so much fresher. And, it's, and you know what? It is as easy as just doing under eye concealer. Just covering up some eye bags eye makes bags, all the difference. Your acne marks, yeah. if any. And or even some redness, you know, around this area of the chin. Maybe some, maybe an eyebrow pencil. Eyebrow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're adding one more, <laughs> one more part after the other. My point is, I feel like we should normalize yeah. guys looking good. Yes. If they want to look good and if makeup can help them do that, then why not? Then how do we change the public perception that is something that is frowned upon because mm. it is viewed as non-masculine? I think it's slowly changing. And I notice with, you know, even brands like Chanel, they have like a line of makeup for Boy men. Boy, Chanel. Yes, exactly. So, and you know that, you're familiar. You also work with <laughs> I them. use it. Yeah, <laughs> I knew it, I knew it, yeah. So, so I think it's starting to become a little bit more normalized in that sense. And then now do you notice that a lot of guys are getting manicures too? And like pedicures. Yeah. But yeah. You have nice feet, don't you? I'm very sure you have nice nails. Well, I, 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 I haven't gone to that, yeah, that, no, that not, level yet. Not yet. Okay, not yet. But I think, you know, with the big movers in the industry, like the big brands, once they start rolling that out, yeah, there might be some resistance at first. But do you think people will just slowly follow and think that, hey, it's okay if I walk into a store and find my shade or something? I think then that's what people like us are here for. Yeah, because people are need, looking to We need more upwards. people to advocate yeah. for uh, guys to pursue beauty yeah. in that sense. Um, looking good comes in many different forms of expressions. Mm. I think for the standard like heterosexual guy yeah. in the Singapore setting, it's always about, like I said just now, watches uh -huh. and maybe like credit card and miles. And then they don't and, care about anything else. And, and, and cars. Yeah. Whereas like if you venture, if you branch out more, then it goes down into like what you're wearing, mm. what perfume you're using, mm. whether your skincare is good, whether or not you're putting some makeup, if mm. your skin is in a very, in a, it's not in a very good condition. Mm. Like all these help to complete the entire presentation yeah. of who you are as a package. So, you know, you brought up a very good point and I think it's particularly useful, let's say, first impressions, job interviews, stuff like that, right? Um, but I have a question also in regards to that because every time we talk to our guy friends or even our partners or whatever, they'll always say like, oh, you girls take like an hour to get ready. <laughs> but us guys, we only take like, what, five, ten minutes? All I need to do is, you know, wax my hair a little bit, I'm out. How long do you take to get ready, Aiden? Well, I'm not lying about this, but... I can get a full face makeup done mm. plus my hair probably in 20 minutes. Okay, 20 minutes. That's yeah. that's not that's not too bad. Yeah, like 15 20 minutes. When you enough. say full face makeup, what what like constitutes I'm starting with like your skincare routine and then your primer, foundation, wow. concealer, basically everything that a girl would do other than eye makeup. You you can do it. Yeah. So, for example, I go filming most of the yes. time, right? Yes. And I actually do my hair and makeup by myself. Oh. For a lot of the, a lot of the days. Yeah. So I can Wake up, do my hair makeup at home, yeah. and then drive to location. Yeah. And so it's you don't have faster. to waste time, right? Yeah, I yeah. don't have to waste time like traveling to a makeup artist yeah. wherever yeah. he or she is. Yeah. So if if my filming is at eight o'clock, yeah. right, I just need to make sure that I wake up by seven. Yeah. You know, quickly like by seven, wash up. Wow, you can make it. Okay. I really can make it. Yeah. You, it takes a guy like maybe ten minutes like wash up yeah. max. Yeah. Right. You brush your teeth, you wash your face, you know, shower yeah. or whatever. And then after like, twenty minutes do your hair makeup. And you have 30 minutes to like drive to location. Yeah, so yeah. and it works. And it works. Yeah. Wow, that's impressive, man. So it's about efficiency and yeah, skill. Yeah, which and the, I believe anybody can pick and up. And you need to sleep like more. <laughs> you need to sleep. Like every that's minute counts. Every minute I mean, counts. Who who likes a call time that starts at like 6 30, 7 or 7 30 a.m.? Yeah, no, this is real life for me every day. I start work at 6 a.m. So no one gets to talk to me about early call times. <laughs> anyway, so aside from hair, makeup, skincare, and all that. I wanted to touch on dressing as well. So there are some memes that float around, you know, the <laughs> internet. You know, have you seen those like about yeah. Singaporean men, like their standard wardrobe, their standard looks and stuff um, when they go out and when they're at home. And there was this one meme, I think we can flash it up on the screen if you're watching the podcast on, on YouTube as well. Uniqlo one is for going out. <laughs> and then the I've army shirt is, uh, <laughs> army shirt is like the, 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 the yeah. work from home or staying at home thing. Do you agree with this? Is that what Singaporean men wear most of the time? You well, know this? 
I think there's some truth to that, yeah. right? For sure. It's not going to lie. There's right? some truth, yes. <laughs> when you go outside, where do you go? even if you go to like Orchard Road, MBS maybe not so much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You walk along Orchard Road, you would definitely see people wearing that like that color block t-shirts. Yes. You know, it's just yeah. one color. And maybe a pair of shorts. Yeah. Right? And they're perfectly fine with it. Dressing is uh, your personal freedom. Yeah. You can wear whatever makes you feel comfortable. Yeah. It's just that overall, mm. as um, because we are in a fashion industry kind of. Yes, yes. So we also think about like things from a macro level. Mm. Like when people think of Singapore, they probably would, don't regard it as like a fashionable, like a fashionable city. city. Yes, yes, I agree. Right? And a lot of it comes from the fact that so-called like the fabric of our society mm -hmm. is is used to dressing down and dressing as casually as possible. And I think a lot of people also use the excuse of, oh, it's so hot. What else would I wear except for a t-shirt, shorts and flip-flops? I do think that there is a lot of, uh, it's, it's the, the, this causation is mm. quite strong here. Mm. I, mean, I studied in the States for a few years. Oh. And whether it's your sweatshirt and sweatpants, uh, that would be the equivalent of our yeah. t-shirt and shorts. But there can still be some styling to be done yeah. there because yeah. there is layering that's involved. Yeah. So as the seasons change, you are encouraged to to change your look. <laughs> okay. But here, there's only one season. There's only one season, <laughs> and therefore people don't have a need to buy clothes as frequently. There's no motivation, yeah. right? And yeah. you want to dress in a way that so like. Layer dressing for guys yeah. is very, very important because mm. we don't have so many I can different see that. types. <laughs> yeah. We don't have so many different types of clothing. Like to for play a girl, around with. Yes, like, yes. How many types of skirts are there? Yeah. Many. How many types of tops are there? Yeah. Many. Yeah. And then some, jewelry, some tops, accessories. I, I swear, like my, <laughs> you know, my, my friends and my boyfriend, sometimes they can't figure it out. They're like, where does the arm go for this top? Like, where does this go? Like, there's so many things to play around Precisely. with. You're right, you're right. But with guys, it's always just about layered dressing. Yes. And yeah. in Singapore, layered dressing means that it's going to get hot. Mm. So do you gonna, are you going to uh, sacrifice your comfort for beauty? Mm. Well, most guys don't even get to that point because yeah. it's, I would rather just not think about it. Yeah. They're right? like, Why? I take Simple two living. minutes to pick out the same t-shirt that I wear every day. Yeah, that I, I know have so many guys. Yeah. yeah, I know so many yeah. guys who have that. <laughs> they do that. Yeah, they believe in that kind of routine. Like one t-shirt, buy like but six or like ten of it. Or whatever color is available, right? yeah. It might be something that's expensive, you know. Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. I know guys like this too, They can too, go yes. to like a... They go Xenia and they're like, okay, I'll yeah, get yeah. this entire... Right? <laughs> one yeah. t-shirt, $500. Yeah. And then just like... <laughs> Buy 10 of it. Yeah. I'm going to wear this on Monday. Wear this and on Tuesday. Like, and this that's my shopping for the year. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done for the year. Yeah. So, I, I think the whole climate becomes kind of... Uh, it, it's just tough yeah. for fashion to they really don't care become as much. a thing in Singapore. Yeah. But that's what we're also seeing change. Mm. Nowadays, a lot of the youngsters... Uh, I don't think it's an issue of being materialistic. Yeah. It's an issue of like... Uh, they're just focused more on self-expression. And that comes with being more fashionable and huh. dressing up a lot more and following trends. I agree. I mean, I think it was quite evident in our generation, you know, the, the millennials, the Gen Zs, we care a little bit more about how we dress or how we look, for example. I don't know whether it's the, the fact that we're exposed to more content online or more celebrities that, you know, lead the way in terms oh. of trends. But since you brought up the fact that here in Singapore, we care less because of the climate, <laughs> Do you then notice, because you travel as well, you know, for work or in your previous travels, you go to places like, I don't know, Tokyo, yeah. um, US, Korea. They, the men there, they put in more effort though, right? I think Do they? It would be a generalization. Okay. But my observation yes. would be, yes. I think Singapore just needs to, with, and with any of these uh, huge cities, like metropolitan cities, yeah. whether it's your Tokyo or New York City, uh, they have a lot of history there and they have their own culture. Right. So what is Singapore's culture and how do we harness it yeah. into something that uh, makes sense uh, beyond just t-shirts and shorts? Yeah, and or your flops. orientation t-shirt from yeah. camp uh, in I mean, Bali. <laughs> <laughs> there was this, it wasn't this incident of the of the what, Mr. Singapore or whatever who carried a Singapore flag and then wore the army shorts with boots. Was it? Oh my god, really? Yeah, I forgot so about that. Okay. So that happened quite recently, right? And that's yeah. his way of representing what Singapore fashion is about. Oh, that that's it? Yeah, every every other country representative wore something that is culturally unique to the right. to their country. Right, right. And then, he, I mean, he was this poor boy was kind of bashed online because oh, like, no. you're like, that is not just what that, Singapore yeah. fashion is. Yeah. You know? But when people think about it this way, then then the question should be, Yeah. What is what is the part of our culture that we can harness yeah. into something that makes sense yeah. 
on a regional or even a global stage when it comes to fashion. So, so how have you done that then as Aiden, as yourself? Like, how have you mm-hmm. incorporated that, blended that in and still, you know, keeping yourself, your personality? I, I think for me, because like, I'm very interested in fashion to begin yeah. with. So, it's more about like, identifying what your personal style is. Yeah. Uh, there are some brands that, I, I mean, I work with a lot of brands, yes. but there are some brands that I resonate with a lot. Yeah, it is a fashionista, by the way. <laughs> just letting you know, okay. If you haven't already seen his Instagram page, you should for some inspo. <laughs> well, so yeah. well, thanks for that. <laughs> but it, it becomes more of like, do you go on that personal journey to yeah. figure out what works for you and what doesn't? Mm. You know, something I like so- about Sonia a lot. Oh, is thank that you. <laughs> she's very versatile. Oh, she, thank you. She's always trying out things mm. with hair. I mean, like number of like hair extensions and wigs that she's done in the past <laughs> six months. It's just crazy. I know. You should see my house. It's just <laughs> all like hair lying around everywhere. No one remembers what my hair length is anymore, to be honest. Yeah. But but the whole thing about self-expression is that you want to be as experimental as possible. Right. Because you don't know what you can possibly look like yeah. until you give it a go. Yeah. Right. And that's something that I feel like a lot of Singaporeans wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't venture to that point because they care a lot more about comfort or they just care a lot about being in, within that zone yes, that, yes. They are, that they are very comfortable with. I mean, I, I think, okay, the, the most basic example, right? You know, we have a lot of friends or I have a lot of girlfriends too that struggle to even cut their hair. Like if it goes past like or above a certain length, they're like, I can't, that's considered very short. So because they're very resistant to to change, it is unlikely that they're going to go all out and be like, oh, I'll try this new look. Or And I guess in industries that's not media, they have little reason to try so many looks. You know what I mean? So like, that's the thing. I have yeah. this conversation with some is of my friends. Is it industry, industry specific, yeah. you think? We, we are, we're so used to being in this whole like fashion media landscape yeah, that like yeah. whatever comes we don't we don't even bat an eyelid and this I'm girl, excited to yeah, try a new look this yeah. guy sh- shows up wearing a kilt we yeah. will applaud him for it yeah, because yeah, yeah. like you own it you get it you know you yeah. work it but the the people that are outside so I'll have these conversations with them why don't I go shopping with you one day right. and like why don't we do something about yeah. this and they'll be they'll actually what I find is that they're quite um, receptive to it. Okay, okay. It's just that there's a lot of inertia. Oh. If you leave it up to me, I'm not going to do anything. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you do it together with me, then or okay, sure, then I sure, don't mind. Yeah. Right? I just have like a, a free, like, uh, yeah. personal shopper with me. Yeah, yeah. Right? And then how do we get more people to be open to this kind of conversation? Yeah. I don't, I, you know, that's, that's <laughs> a very tough question. I think it's only going to be, it has to be a natural progression in that sense, right? Like, you can't force a guy who is who's never been interested in fashion before, unless you, like what you said, you know, you offer to shop with your friend or whoever, and he actually sees the difference. I think the moment they see the difference, you know, between a normal store-bought suit and a tailored suit, for example, then their minds might slowly start changing and their taste might change as well. People who venture to that and understand, you know, what quality means, yeah. it's great. But yeah. on the other spectrum of things, I also think that even things that you buy from Taobao, yeah. they can look fantastic For too, sure, yeah. Right? So you, as long as you got exposed to it, which I, I feel like one very good thing about social media, like you said just now, yeah. the fact that people are consuming so much content on a daily basis, they follow influencers here and there, local, regional, mm. uh, international, they just see all these different ways of dressing and a lot of them get absorbed into their subconscious of yeah. how they should be dressing. So yeah. you, we have definitely moved away slightly from your t-shirt and shorts yeah. to uh, fortunately or unfortunately this kind of like sweatshirt, sweatpants <laughs> yeah, face yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> everybody seems to be in. Did you see his eyes? He was like, <laughs> not again. I mean, I wear that a lot too. Yeah. Right? But the next time I see it, essentials. That's the thing, right? People just gravitate towards their comfort zone. And when we talk about that, when did you realize what your personal style was? Because you talk so much about personal style and, you know, you mentioned that. But to some of us who may not understand how to get there, it's, it's just like branding, right? You know, in our industry. When did you realize like, oh, okay, yeah, I think I vibe with this style. And what is your style? So, I mean... Firstly, we divide into guys, or not just guys, both yeah. gu- guys yeah. and girls. People who understand yeah. what they want yeah. or will be able to navigate to that point by themselves. Mm. And then the other spectrum, the other side of things are people who just don't have a clue, yeah. right? So let's address that first. Okay. You know, you are not, no man is an island. Yeah. <laughs> there are people around you who can help. Yes. I don't know about your partner, uh-huh. but like, if he is clueless, like then it's great that he has you around. Oh, right, right, right. And precisely, yeah. if like, if you don't know anything, ask your girlfriend, ask yeah. your wife, or ask or whoever who's around person, you. Or the person, like even, right? could help you. <laughs> yeah. Have you, has it, you must have come across this in your life at some point where people come up to you and be like, 
oh, I think you look pretty good in this. Yeah. You know? And or then like, you keep, you're supposed to be like, okay, I noticed yeah. that. And then you I have this assurance, change. right? Yeah, 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 and then yeah. you move on and be like, oh, maybe I look, I do look quite good in this. Yeah. And that's how a lot of your style gets shaped. Yeah. You know? Like people start identifying, oh, you can pull off that whole like streetwear, yeah. set shirt, set pen. Yeah. Or some people just look very good in suits. Yeah. Some people look very good in, you know, denim. Yeah. You know, you just have to find something that, uh, that, that, you your body proportions works for yeah right? nobody looks good in, in every single thing out there you're supposed to dress to complement your body type also I feel yeah you know? so I mean guys don't really understand that yeah I know yes they don't think about proportions they don't so a lot of times they're like it's not that I don't want to look good I don't know what I can possibly look good in right, right? and they just need somebody to tell them oh maybe you should try going for this in Singapore I feel like a lot of guys are focused you know there's, there's I, I've heard this um one way that people describe Singapore outside of our country is... I'm curious to know, what do they say? It's called the, the prawn capital. Huh? Yeah. The prawn capital? Because we're, we're a prawn, right? We're, we're very shellfish, people? No. <laughs> we're a prawn. Okay. You eat the, the meat, right? Which is the body. Okay. So you take the head and you uh, throw it away. Uh-huh. <laughs> so basically saying that Singaporean guys are like all... They all go to the gym and they're very meaty and muscular. But they don't look but good the and they're not very not... presentable. Oh, so no. you take away the shell, all you left left is the muscle and the meat. Oh no, I never heard of this before. Where where have you heard of, Where did you hear this from? I've never heard of this. <laughs> I know, I, a lot of my friends who are from, from overseas, that's how they refer to a Singaporean oh, guys. No. Okay, okay. The sad thing is, I mean, I have a number of friends. Um, some of them are Singaporean and some of them say like Singaporean men are nothing much to look at and oh. I feel like oh no okay I didn't say it okay well Don't at least they me. go to the I gym yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least they go to the gym uh, that's good at well, least they're healthy there are very I guess like skewed expectations of what I guys guess. are supposed to look like in Singapore yes. I feel like Everyone is hitting the gym, and if yeah. you don't look a certain way, you don't have a certain frame. Right. It's it's just not it, it's just not appealing mm. in that sense. But because of that, if you keep going to the gym, you know you want to show off your assets, and as a result, everybody keeps wearing clothes that are very very tight, oh. right? But it might or might not be suitable for your proportions, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. So yeah. that's when you need to like go on that journey of like figuring out maybe instead of wearing very very tight clothes yeah. to show off your muscles, yeah you are more suited for an oversized look. No one is going to have this thought process. I think in that moment, they're like, I want to show off my assets, right? <laughs> and that's what they're doing. I don't know. I mean, at some point, at the end of the day, you just want people, you, you want to feel confident yeah. in whatever you're wearing. Yeah. And ideally, even if you're single, yeah. you can make other people think that you're attractive. Okay, so I, in that sense, have a very low... Um, barometer. So my... <laughs> I, generally, I love... Okay... Yeah, I know this is going to sound weird. I love a guy in a crisp white shirt and like proper tailored pants. You know, I see some of the producers and the people <laughs> behind cameras nodding away as well. Yeah. So basically, I walk into the CBD and my type is there. Like right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but it also makes a difference if they're wearing like a proper, you can tell if it's like a yeah. proper fitted, you know, shirt yep. blazer. I think it makes such a difference. And with with men, although you don't have that much um, different articles of clothing to play around with, it's all about the fit. Guys, that is take so important. note. This is very important. Yeah. Sonia is sharing some, you know, <laughs> words of gold with you. Yeah. It's not just about, you know, how expensive your clothes are yeah. or even how intricate or complex they are. Yeah. Girls have this ability... <laughs> To see through the, the BS <laughs> yeah. and understand, oh, this guy has actually spent some time to look the way that he does. Exactly, exactly. And it also, I can also tell when it comes to personal grooming. So, uh, okay. I get you. So let's talk about that. <laughs> what are some, I have a story, I have a story, but what are some of your pet peeves? Let's just not say in, okay, it doesn't mean it has to be in men or in the opposite sex or whatever, just in general, okay? okay. Like when you first meet a person, what what are some of your first impressions? What's important to you and that you notice first? Personal grooming wise. Personal grooming wise. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I really don't like facial hair. Really? Yeah. Okay. For, for guys. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what irritates me a lot is like nose hair. Oh nose oh, oh that's like peeking out. Yeah. <laughs> it's like peeking out right here. Okay. Yeah. I just feel like that's a representation of like you. Probably not looking in the mirror enough. <laughs> oh my god. But what they just don't realize, they're like, oh, it's nature. I mean, I know um, a lot of my male friends who actually go for like trimming or like they do the, what do you, 
Do they wax your, your, your y- nose? Y- yeah, I think that, I think I believe that it's a process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's honestly quite painful. So most of them just like trim it at least. Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> Ouch! Can you imagine that? Or or that's nails. So nails. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I can't. I can't deal yeah. with like. Can you imagine like you see a guy who has like nails that are, like this super long? Super long. Yeah, and, like, yeah. With girls, right? Because I, I like girls. They don't go for like manicures. So, so it's, it's not groomed. It's not groomed. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I, understand. I think that's a that's a representation of like you perhaps not really caring about personal yes. grooming that much, yes. which would be perfectly fine for yourself. Mm. It's just a turn off for the girls. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, I have a, I have a story, not going to name names as usual. Most <laughs> things stay anonymous here. So <laughs> I don't even think he knows I exist anymore. But anyway, so one of my biggest pet peeves would be oral hygiene, like oh. teeth. Okay. So the moment you talk to a person or you, Actually, is there any food in my teeth? I did not ask. You can tell if someone hasn't been to the dentist in their life, their entire life. Like, I know people who have never stepped into a dentist. And you can see the plug and the tartar just building up around. Well, she's going down the, to the details. I'm going down to the details, okay? Because <laughs> there's nothing more satisfying than going for like cleaning every few months. I'm like, oh, it feels so great. But then I also wonder sometimes when I meet people for the first time, you know, and I, I notice that their teeth like not in good shape or like bad breath and stuff like that. That is an immediate like, whoa to me. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know if I can continue this conversation. <laughs> so there was this guy I met before and he was actually like an old acquaintance. Okay. And I got, got reunited with him again, like a few years down the road after we had lost contact. And I was like, wow, he got cute. I was like, he got cute. Hello, what's up? So and we were single. Up yeah, the glow up moment, single at the time. And then you know, we were just having drinks. It was cool. Like we were kind of sitting like this distance, like across a cocktail table, right? And then the night ends. He said, oh, do you want to go to, to another place for a drink? I was like, sure. And we walk off and he tried to make a move basically. And the moment he came here, I was like, Okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> I was like, oh no. I was like, oh no. I think he has not brushed his teeth in like probably five days. But I was like, okay, I don't think I can do this. Well, but... another, another Wait, point in the podcast know... where guys need to take notes. You must know something. I, I allowed the kiss to happen oh. and regretted it immediately. She condoned the behavior and uh, I, I fortunately I lived to tell the tale. Yeah, I lived to tell the tale and we never met again. <laughs> I never really told him why because I was afraid he'd be offended. But yeah, should I have told him? I don't know. Maybe I should have. Like, should I have given nah, him like It's not a... your responsibility. And that's the thing, you know. Like, but, but then what if he's just going through life and no one tells him? And then he's still out there. He's still out there with tatar and his teeth. Tatar on his teeth. Guys, the same way that girls take responsibility for how they look, how right. they present themselves, you know, as much as, you know, you have to wait for them for half an hour, an hour, yeah, two hours yeah, to get yeah. ready. That's their way of being responsible towards themselves as and well as the people that yeah, they're going out with. And showing that I care about yeah. this meeting. Right? So if you're a guy, then you kind of have to do the same. Yeah. And oftentimes that just involves, you know, being a little, little bit more diligent, yeah. consistent with a routine <laughs> yeah. and staring at yourself in the mirror more. Just a bit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not that I do that very proactively. I have to do that when I do my makeup. But, no, but I think it's a, it's a job hazard for yeah. us. It's a job hazard because we, we're constantly, when we're not, you know, in front of the camera or recording something or doing something, we're sitting in front of the mirror doing makeup. Like someone's doing makeup for us. Then what, what before can you do? After. Before work, you're doing that. Exactly. In between work, you also have to do that because yes. you have to get ready for your next thing. Yes. So you just spend a lot, a lot of time in front of the mirror and yeah. it, uh, we're forced to notice things that we don't want to notice. Exactly. <laughs> and you fixate on things as well. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. for if you are a regular guy out there who is yeah. not in the media landscape, yeah. in the media industry, then... Mm-hmm you kind of have to take more responsibility for that because nobody's going to tell you in a bar that your breath stinks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? No one's going to Nobody's say going to come up to you and tell you that your nails are turned off. Yeah. You know, or like you didn't shave properly. Yeah. <laughs> or you shaved halfway. Yeah, right? yeah. I know, that's the thing. So I, I'm afraid that like maybe, you know, your partners need to be more vocal about it or maybe or your friends. Or if you're single, or, then... Yeah. You have to, you know, be more self aware. Be more self aware and reflective, and that's why you're still single. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Shots fired. Shots fired. <laughs> okay, so aside from what you mentioned earlier with the nose hair, is there anything else that turns you off? Like just first impressions. Doesn't even have to be a romantic setting. Oh. Yes. I can't stand clothes that are not steamed or ironed. Or ironed. <laughs> Oh, Especially no. if it's that kind of material. I mean, like, honestly, with denim, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but if you're wearing something that's, like, I don't know, silk or, like, Just a t-shirt. Or like a sweat, a sweatshirt that crumples yes. easily. Yes, 
Yeah, I know. Wait, so do you iron and do you have a steamer at home? Or yeah, I, I, I wash and steam all my clothes by myself. Wow. Yeah. And wow. it's like a routine, you know? I mean, as you can buy a steamer on like Shopee or Taobao or oh, something. Oh yeah, like, like the miniature steamers? Yeah, it's is that what cheap. you do? It's less than $30. Okay. You can even get it for like 10 plus, right? Yeah, but then the effort, you no, know? No, the effort okay. is what? It's less than a minute. <laughs> to to okay. steam one t-shirt, it probably takes you 20 seconds. Oh my gosh. And nowadays with the steamers, right? They heat up so quickly. Yeah. So you really have no excuse. Yeah. If you're telling me that you have to like set up the ironing board and like, you know, wait for the, the iron to, to like heat, heat up. up. Yeah. I mean, then that's BS. Because yeah, like, yeah, yeah. if you do that sure if you buy a steamer yeah it really takes you less than 30 30 seconds so i need to i need to say this um my partner doesn't <laughs> really iron any clothes but somebody does okay. it for him right okay okay <laughs> okay we have a helper he has a helper that comes in once a week to help with like you know certain okay his work shirts and stuff okay like he will send it off to dry cleaner but in regards to regular t-shirts so what we do is we will hang it in a way that is very straight on the head. No, do what you need so to do. <laughs> it, it crumples minimally. And I don't have to take out the iron, which he spent $800 on, which I don't get it because he never used it. You know why? Because I cannot figure it out. I'm like, why didn't you just get like an $80 uh, ironing board? Don't ever let men go out and buy home appliances. <laughs> this is another episode for another day. <laughs> okay. okay, it might be you back again. Yeah. I can talk about you that too. You might be back again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I, I do know a handful of men who are conscious about this and they definitely have these pet peeves as well. Especially if it's a shirt. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, right? I, I mean, care. Sonia's going to walk into the CBD and then she's going to like, sh not steam, steam, <laughs> not steam, steam. <laughs> and I mean steam in terms of the shirt, not like steam, <laughs> you know. So yeah, th these uh, it's interesting that you, you picked that out because I think it's so underrated. Like it's not talked about enough. It irritates me because I understand how how quickly you can get it done. Yes. And for you yes. to not even spend that additional minute. Yes. I'm always running late for shoots to be honest like, because you're steaming no, <laughs> at home no, like now I know like, no matter, if, if he's late he's like I'm almost there but he's but like steaming no matter how late I am yeah. I will not leave house with yeah. an unsteamed piece of shirt I get it I mean you take a pic but do people understand take a pic you either spend 30 seconds or 1 minute steaming this or your photographer spends 2 hours doing photoshop oh that's true some people would rather let the photographer do photoshop <laughs> And then if you come across people who are not in this industry, they're like, no one's going to take photos of me. What? Like, you know? Yeah, but what gonna... are my eyes here for? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I feel like we got a lot of one-liners from Aiden. Like, we need to say, we need to cut out. Put yeah, on a t-shirt. We need to put on a t-shirt. Okay, so you obviously seem very exposed to not just beauty, but fashion styles. Who are some of your biggest influences? Or like, how did you become exposed to so many different options, styles, and, and all that. I think when like I was that. much younger, it yeah. was really about finding brands that mm. fit a certain aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At some point, everybody was like crazy about Zara. Yeah, right, right? yeah. And then, as I started doing this more, yeah. you know, actually like, you know, one foot into the fashion industry. Yes. Then you find designers that you really resonate with. Yeah. Right? So like Kim Jones from Dior, mm. right? the tailoring is very on point. Yeah. Or like... Alejandro Satori from Xenia. They're just people that, you know, you really like what they do. Yes. And, it's, you know, it may be driven by brand history, mm. it may be driven by the archives, yeah. but there's a certain way that they cut the clothes that makes it feel good. Yes. And when you try it on yourself. It's flattering. It's flattering. Yeah. Somehow, this just makes me look better than yeah. I am. Yeah. And as you go on this journey, then you'll like try out many, many different types of designers, right? And you figure that some work for you and some don't. Yeah. Right? And, and you know, on that note as well, you're talking about fit and cutting and how it makes you feel more confident. I think there's a misconception also, like girls are the only ones that care about dressing for their body type. Because, yeah, for sure, like my girlfriends and I, we talk about this all the time because, you know, it's a very mean girls moment. We sit around a circle and then my, my friend goes like, oh my God, I hate my brows today or like the other girl goes I am so fat they're all not they're not by the way they look perfect yeah, okay I, I can feel like if there was a guy that it, in the that midst in on that, he would yeah. just be like rolling his eyes the entire way like yeah 100% eyebrows what they look perfectly fine to me yeah. fat where's the fat yeah. I don't understand yeah, it yeah exactly dress didn't you just buy this for like $500 so, what are you complaining about so that's why I wanted to quote this also this incident um, between uh, one of my friends and her now ex ex okay they're not together anymore um, he doesn't get when she wants to cover up certain parts of her body because she is not confident in them she wants to dress for her body he's like why don't 
why, why are you so, you know, conscious about it? Like, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. It's all the same. But to us, it's like, it's not the same because if you're mm-hmm. insecure, for example, about your about your stomach or your legs or, you know, or your pear shapes, for example, then you want to dress in a way that it elongates you or, or you know, yeah. makes you look more flattering or I always dress to look taller. That's, that's me. So, yeah, that's what I need to do. And I feel like for men as well, you guys come in different shapes and sizes, heights, you know, proportions and stuff, right? It is important to dress to your proportion too, don't you think? I completely agree with that. Yeah. And I mean, on behalf of all the guys out there, it's a bit difficult to understand uh, your own proportions. Yeah, even right? the, down to the length of the shirt or the blazer and stuff. Yeah. Just because like guys just don't spend as much time um, Noticing figuring this out. Yeah. Right? I feel like if you go, you know, you can have a conversation with your girlfriends about yes. this. But like, oh, then, you know, if, if I'm a girl and ask you, what should I wear? Yeah. What should I be wearing? Yeah. And I'm quite sure if we have an army of girls in front of me, they'll be like, oh, your, you know, your head is this size, your face yeah. is this size, your body is this size, so, so you should, should be wearing this, 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 this. this, 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 yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you're a guy, who can you go to for this yeah. kind of advice? They're just like, they'll just be like, bro. Yeah, and I then know. freeze. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's so funny because we just had some conversations with our other guests as well about what bros talk about <laughs> during their conversations amongst each other. It never comes to beauty and grooming and fashion. That's something that Rarely. you just need to do by yourself and surprise people with. Yeah, right? yeah. So it's hard to figure out what works for you. I mean, uh, for, for me, and not that we can cover a lot today, yeah. but like some simple tips. If you happen to have a very big head, yeah. right? Right. Okay, okay. <laughs> Okay. But I feel like okay. my head is like bigger. Is like it? Most, yeah. Okay. Then yeah, you just need small. to go with oversized clothes because oh. it makes your shoulders look broader and your head therefore will look smaller. Is that why you're wearing an oversized denim jacket? Oh, that's one reason. Okay. Yeah. So that's like figuring <laughs> that's good out yeah. Yeah, figuring out what works for you, right? If you have like, uh, if you're like a bit more, you know, strangely, the types of guys that look the best in suits yes. are guys that have a very straight cut. Okay. So you would think that the perfect male body is that V-shape. Right. Oh, oh, you mean like the, the cut shape. in with the muscles yeah. on the broad okay. shoulders, very tight waist. Yeah. But actually, people like that don't really they do, they don't look the best in suits because yeah. they end up being this like space at the side. Right, right. And so, then the arms fill up like the yeah. <laughs> fill up the, the, the yeah, sleeves. Yeah. Precisely. So interestingly, if you're someone who is like that, which a lot of people think, oh, this is not the ideal cut, right? Because like your shoulders and your waist, like it's just about this shape. Yeah, yeah. Right? Very yeah. blockish. Mm. You look very good in suits. Oh. Yeah, because okay. it falls very nicely. And this, this this is the type of person that can go to Zara and buy a right. like off the rack and look perfect. Y- you need to do like an online version of this, <laughs> like <laughs> consultant work or something, you know? So that's basically it, right? You look at the mirror and be like, okay, where is too big, where is too small? Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, this is something that you, we all have to live with, right? It's yeah. not like we can go to plastic surgery and change the size of our head. Exactly. Right? Or your height. Right. So there's one way to go about it for guys, which is to work out more. Yeah. You have very tiny shoulders. If you feel like you'll look better being more filled up when you wear clothes, then hit the gym. Yeah. But if that's something you don't want to do, or it's not something you're inclined to, that's perfectly fine too. You just have to find clothes that fit you a little bit more. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there are so many types of design aesthetics out there, right? Very thin guys. A lot of Japanese guys are very thin. They yeah. don't have a gymming but culture over great. there. They, they look, look great. They look great in suits. Yeah. Very stylish. And there's yeah. a certain way that they dress that feels very casual, dressed down, yeah. but at the same time very, very comfortable. Yes. And I Effortless. Think, yeah, Effortless. That's very suitable for Singaporeans actually. Yeah. So, I think I think also sometimes, um, I don't know whether it's specific to Asia as well, there's a larger amount of guys who are maybe not as tall as you know people in the US or maybe even Korea. I'm not sure what the height situation <laughs> is over there. But but I have a couple of guy friends who feel very insecure about their height. And I think for guys, it might be even tougher to dress for your height. You know what I mean? Because for girls, we can wear heels. You know, I, I usually, what I do is like I wear longer pants or whatever. And then you drop it down to the floor. You instantly look taller. But for guys, it's tough. Like that one is a tough one. So with short guys, right? Yeah. I mean, if you happen to be a little bit more like... Oh, you have a tip for this. Yeah, okay, I'm ready. Like, <laughs> the most like stockish. Yes. Right? I think you can go for that. Hawaiian prints, anything that's printed. A short sleeve button down, soft t-shirt that uh-huh. will allow it to rest very nicely on your body and you'll look a bit larger than life. Oh, yeah. wow. So it's distraction technique, is it? Okay. <laughs> I'm not actually short. I'm actually, yeah. just look at the flamingos yeah, on my t-shirt. flamingos, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like pineapples, flamingos. Oh my God. Okay. So on that note then, what is the one essential item you think all men should have in their closet? 
If you could narrow it down to an essential item, if you have a few, it's fine as well. <laughs> well it's like, where do I start? I have yeah. like 20 essential items. They're all important. I think... Oh no, <laughs> what I said was true. What I said was true. Basic pieces are very, very important, right? Yes. Like a black t-shirt or a white t-shirt. They mm. basically go with anything. A pair of black shorts, a pair of white shorts. They also go with everything. Mix and match, right? Yeah. Your like all the standard colors, your your cream color, your your black, your white, your gray. You know, this thing is just like mix and match every yeah. day. You yeah. just have to find something that's fitting. Yes, the right, right? fit. Yes. So maybe you can go to... There's nothing wrong with buying, say, Uniqlo yeah. if it works for your body shape. Yeah. But it, the harsh reality is that some people can't wear Uniqlo. Like, I can't oh. wear most of the Uniqlo basic tees because they don't oh. fit me. Oh, how yeah. come? You, you have broad shoulders. They're you, just too short. Oh, for, oh the length. Yeah, okay, the length is too okay, short. Okay. Right? So whether it's an L or XL, right? They just they Doesn't both make don't a fit. difference, yeah. right? Because the cutting is not suitable for me. Yeah. So even though like... And I've seen guys look fantastic yes. in Uniqlo. Yeah. Right. So it's not about the brand, it's about me right. not being able to wear this brand. So if you want to buy some essentials, then you have to find a brand that suits you. Mm. So it's about going on that journey, right? And whether you, whether it's just a plain white t-shirt, it can there are white t-shirts that look good on you and there are white t-shirts that look very bad on For you. For sure, 100 percent right. And on the note of Uniqlo, I just have to not a sponsored post, but they have the best seamless underwear, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, sisters out there, seriously, and they have seamless underwear for men now, FYI. Because okay, I know that camera guys here who are like, what is she talking about? No visible panty lines, okay? <laughs> Even for men. <laughs> it's true. Like, you know, some some outfits that, that you wear or some materials, sometimes maybe you're going to like beach party in Miami or something, don't go and wear like some hush puppies underwear or like <laughs> what, okay? That's like navy blue or something and I can see it through your like white pants. Yeah. <laughs> white shorts yes. and a beach and then you wear like black colored underwear inside. No, yeah, it's a you're no. Asking it's, exactly, you're asking for it. Exactly. You're asking for it. So, you need clothes, seamless underwear <laughs> for men and for women. Uniqlo, please sponsor our next episode. <laughs> okay. I'm actually very curious. Yes. What would you want in... I mean, I know the answer. She's going to say like a white press shirt. <laughs> yeah, a white, but, well-fitted <laughs> white shirt. Yeah. But beyond yeah. that, what do you expect out of a men's closet? Wow, I mean, that's an interesting one. So let me let me share with you how I changed my partner's wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> you should do like a, yeah. like a renovate, but like a... I know, right? Yeah. So <laughs> Sonia's eye. That's the thing. So when I when I met him, um, it's he he already looked like, you know, presentable. good. Yeah, he looked presentable. Um, there were some things that would change, but it's okay. So... <laughs> so Moderately um, acceptable. He, yeah, he he did walk out um, in, a, in a white shirt and like, well fit pants and stuff and you know I know that for sure this guy kind of knows what he's doing like he definitely got it tailored you know because he's like a working professional um, he used to work in a bank and stuff so I knew that he definitely has an eye for it but the haircut was one thing and okay before you think oh all guys haircut same one just go QB house lah one time you know $10 <laughs> is it still $10 or is it like 15 now I have no it's idea like it's, yeah probably, probably more expensive now and, you know, th that's the thing. A lot of people do that because it's accessible, it's affordable, and there's nothing wrong with that. But a haircut can make all the difference, I feel. <laughs> so I brought him to my hairstylist, who's very good at men's cuts, okay? And he was like, oh, do I really have to go? Because I've been going to this barber. Barber. <laughs> nothing wrong with barbers, but he's been since going he to the... Since he was a child. Si yes. <laughs> since he no, I'm not kidding. Since he was a child. <laughs> and I said, okay, but the thing is, he's doing the same haircut haircut for you as he would maybe as you were you know 20 years old or 18 so you couldn't have to change it up it'll make a difference so he said okay give it a chance pays five times more probably to go to, <laughs> to the hairstylist that I go to got a haircut and he never turned back because he was like everyone's complimenting him <laughs> yeah they, everyone was saying you look so different what did you do and he was like oh Nothing much, you know. But I was like, bitch, it was a haircut, okay, that I brought you to. <laughs> but it, it does make a big difference, you know. Just the little touches, maybe even the size, even the way you style your hair, for example. You put thought into it. Of course. Yeah. And that's the thing with, with, with gentlemen out there, right? Yeah. It's, it's really some... The, you know, the, the smallest of things yes. can make the huge, the biggest of differences. Yes, yes. Right? Think of changing your hair. Yeah. Think of, I don't know, perhaps going for a facial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, concealer. I drag him to facial too. Like, yeah. So I actually suffer from like really sensitive skin. Mm. So my skin is very prone to breakouts. Okay. Right? And that's why, you know, some little like makeup gadgets, like yeah. a concealer or even some foundation, they just make a world of difference. Right. You know, that being said, if you're someone out there who suffers from such issues, 
it's not just about your skincare routine. Mm. It's also about your diet mm. and uh, perhaps some underlying conditions. Yeah. So you can do a few things, right? You can speak to a nutritionist yeah. or go to a dermatologist because they'll be able to advise you on whether or not you have some something that you don't know about Yes. that's yes. causing all the bad acne. No, 100%. Um, I used to suffer from acne, actually, when I was a teenager. And it stretched on all the way till I was in poly. So it went into my adult years a little bit. And you know, that was when I started meeting guys. I was like, oh my god, I'm hideous. I'm like, oh, I don't want to go out, that, that feeling. I cannot imagine a Sonia like that. Uh, no, it, <laughs> yes, I will find photos. Or did I delete them? It's not uncommon for people to, you know, use medication yeah, to combat course. against skin issues. And if you're somebody who is like, you know, you go to like Watson's and you've bought like, I don't know, 20 balls of Oxy. And, and it they, doesn't work. It still doesn't work. Then perhaps then. you need to consider not going from outside, but from the inside. Yes. And speaking to a dermatologist would definitely help you with that. And it doesn't really have to be those expensive like skin clinics. You can mm. also go to the National Skin Center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have fantastic doctors and the medicines are a lot cheaper. Mm. It's all these small little things. Yeah. That that can potentially change your your look 180. Yes. Right. Are you willing to kind of like put that foot out? Yeah. To try it. Yeah. That's yeah. a decision that people have to make. Yeah. Right. It's honestly uh, not that difficult. Yeah. But it takes a lot of uh, pro kind you of like initiative. You need to identify it. You need right. to identify these things. And and on that note of you know small touches, right? Another thing that I wanted to say is. Um, you know, glasses actually make a big difference to like the choice of <laughs> frames. Okay, so yeah. um, so so my partner wears glasses, and uh, I like him with glasses because I like the slightly nerdy, you know, like look, and with the white shirt and all, it's like you know, yeah, chef's kiss. <laughs> so so he wore these like um glasses that are very thin rimmed, you know, those like almost seamless. Uh -huh. I was like, sister, this is a no la. <laughs> Cannot la. I was like, this one not very fashionable, you know. It's either that yeah. or like, you know the army, like black frames, Rims, rectangular yeah, the, yeah, ones. Yeah, <sighs> yeah it's, it looks... No, that's a no for you, is it? Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> no, so I got him to go like, you know, just own days or whatever. Uh, it, wherever. They have fashionable frames. Just go see and I'm like, okay, this one looks looks much cooler. It makes you look so much younger as well. All of a sudden, your face is lifted, you know? And it's not even about wanting to look 10 years younger. It's about looking fresher. So these small touches make a difference. So yeah. spectacles or glasses, that is another look in your arsenal. Yes. It's not a setback. Yes, you know? exactly. So some people are like, okay, I'm just going to laser, I'm going to do contacts and then yeah. when I go, go home, I'm going to like put on my nerdy glasses. Yeah. Why do glasses have to be nerdy? Yeah. Or if you're, if it's going to be nerdy, then you look like a hot nerd. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's, I dig that. I dig that. <laughs> yeah. So these small touches definitely making a world of difference, right? Any other uh, articles of clothing that's very important to you in your wardrobe or, or that's about it? Mm, I think a good singlet is very important. Singlet? Yeah, because okay. like with layered dressing, right? Another oh, you don't want to perspire. Like or, if you okay. don't want to wear something that's too thick. Can you imagine yeah. you wear a sweater yeah. or like a hoodie yeah. and then you wear you a, a jacket patch. on top? Yeah. You wear a jacket on top because you want to layer it. Uh -huh. How hot would you be? Yeah, yeah. Right? So why don't you just wear a singlet or a tank oh, instead? And then okay. you can layer it on. And okay. if, if it really gets very hot, just take it off. Yeah. But you, then you have to go to the gym. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it all kind of goes back to seeing you at the gym anyway at some point. Aiden, thank you so much for joining us on this really fun topic that we had here today. You know, it was... My pleasure. It's, the thing is, you don't realise that these things also can contribute to a person's confidence, a person's life, um, you know, relationship and stuff like that. People underestimate these things, right? Okay, before we wrap things up, um, any last tips you want to share with our sometimes clueless men out there? I think with guys, it's yeah. really just don't be afraid to look good. Yeah. Right. Yes, there is still that stigma about like, oh, guy, if you know, if you care too much about about your appearance, about yeah. what you wear, about makeup and skincare yeah. and whatnot. Oh, you're so feminine. Right? You're oh, very feminine. Yeah. But it's a lot. It's really beyond that. Yeah. I think we've come to the point where we are progressive enough to understand that. Sure, of course. You know, people should just embrace their self-expression. Yeah. Right. So, you know, along that train of thought, if your self-expression is to really stay at home and like wear pajamas every day, like that's perfectly fine too. Mm. But if you are part of that group that you, know, you keep thinking, how I'm not very comfortable with how I look, and I just feel like there's something I can do, but I'm not sure what I can. Mm. exactly act on mm -hmm. then this is the time for you to you know look at yourself more yeah. Yeah. and figure out and if you can't figure out by yourself then ask people yeah. and don't be afraid to take that first step to change it because yeah. then you realise that you're a lot more than you think you are 
You know, um, that's that's a very good tip, very good point. And I think the Clarity team should consider getting Aiden and I on for a makeover series. <laughs> <laughs> we just get some people, make them over. I'm sure you have so much fun with it. Yeah, like, honestly. I, I know some friends that would be f- happy to sign up. <laughs> Ooh, okay, okay. Well, thank you for sharing your tips. And, you know, you always look so fabulous. You follow him up on, on social media. He always looks great. So thank you for joining us. Finally, we made this happen. <laughs> yes, I'm, I have lost my experience, version experience the man explain and now I can look forward to the second time hopefully not like three four years later yeah 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 no 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 definitely will be sooner and we'll get a, a juicier topic for you as well oh, next so why not right? this is just a warm up okay. <laughs> Aiden you know what I really hope to get you back for another episode where we really push the boundaries for that the will next be my one. honor although I'm a bit scared <laughs> when you say that it's just a warm up thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Men Explain if you enjoyed it please hit the follow button subscribe to our channel also like and share this video if anything that was discussed resonates with you you can also share with us in the comments below we'll see you guys next time hopefully